Hello and welcome back. We are on page 20 in your notes and I want to try really hard to get all the way through uh, chapter 2, section 5. It's, it's not too tough. It's valuable for us. Uh, it might go a little bit longer than normal, but stick with me through it hopefully and we can uh, get you ready to move on. Uh, so we'll get right into it then, get page 20 at the top. Uh, equivalent fractions are fractions that are equal. All right, so two fractions that are equal, uh, but written in a different form, and we have some things that we need to be able to do with that. Um, first thing we need to be able to do is to create equivalent fractions like this. Let's say you have one fourth. It's two different questions here. First question, second question. First one is one fourth. A one equivalent fraction of one fourth would be two eighths. All I did is I multiplied the top and the bottom number by the same thing. That creates an equivalent fraction. It's the same amount, just written differently. I could have, instead of multiplying by two, I could have multiplied times three. One times three, four times three, and that would have given me that. One times three is three, four times three is twelve. I could have done it again. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. The key is that you multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. So if I do the same thing to number 2, bottom example there, 5 6, if I multiply it by 2, 10 over 12. 5 times 2, 10. 6 times 2, 12. I did the same thing times 3. 5 times 3, 6 times 3, you'd have. 15 eighths, or again, by 4, you'd have 20 over 24. They're all, it's all the same. These are all the same amount of stuff. Okay, they're equal fractions, just written different. Let's look at, look at a picture of what we're talking about. That's the top of page 21. If I have 1 fourth in this first example here, if I have 1 fourth, that would be 1 out of 4. Remember, the top number is the part, all right? The bottom number is the number, the number of parts it takes to make one whole. If one out of four, well, if I look at this one over here, if I shade that same amount, the one that's cut into eight parts, you would have two eighths, but you have the same amount shaded here and here, so they're equal, okay? This one is just cut into smaller slices. Okay, if we do it for number two, the bottom question here, that shows five out of six right there, so you'd have five shaded out of six. So if you shade the same amount on the right, let me count those up. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. You have ten, and it takes twelve to make a whole, but it's the same total amount. Again, it's just cut into smaller slices around the pie. That's page 21, like we said. And then if we look at the bottom, okay, um, if you have a whole bunch of equivalent fractions, the one with the smallest number is called simplest form. Smallest numbers. In math, here's what we say. We say that there is no common factor. And those are really my key math words here. There's no common factor in the numerator and the denominator. Okay? And we'll learn how to do that later. But for now, what I need you to be able to do is like this, page 22, is to identify which of those are the equivalent fractions. Or I'm sorry, which one of these is in simplest form. Now, as I keep teaching here, again, let me just remind you again, if, I, if it feels like I'm going too fast, please pause, get it down, go back and forth as necessary to help you. Um, the simplest form is this one. Because that's the smallest one. There's no common factor in 3 and 4 other than 1, and that doesn't really count. Uh, but in all of these other examples, here, these all have common factors. Like, let's just take this one, for example, 12 over 16. There's a common factor of 4. I could go 12 divided by 4, and I could go 16 divided by 4. 12 divided by 4, 
3, 16 divided by 4 is 4. And that's basically how you do what I'm about to show you next. Uh, and that is put something into simplest form. Let's take 8 twentieths. Well, I want to ask myself, what's the biggest number okay, that will go into both 8 and 20? And what we call that is the greatest common factor. We're going to get more into that later, actually, a little more detail. But that's what we're doing on them. Ask myself, what is the greatest common factor of 8 and 20? Well, it's 4. So I'm going to divide out 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 2 fifths. That's the simplest form. And there it pops us, popped up for us. Anyway. If I did the same thing with 30 and 6, I'm going to ask myself, what's the biggest number that goes into both 30 and 6? You think about that, hopefully you realize it's 6. And if I divide both the top and the bottom by 6, that's 5, that's 1, and that really is 5 right there. So that's the simplest form. For us. You have to put, if you ever have a fraction answer, you have to put the final answer in the simplest form. It's automatically 50% off the top for you. Okay, so uh, with that, um, if, you, if you're if you asked to find out if two fractions are equivalent, let's say I pretend I gave you a question that said, are these two fractions equal? One way to do that is to get a common denominator. A common denominator is really important for us when we do addition with fractions, and that's going to come later. It's probably the hardest part of the fraction unit, but right now we're just going to kind of introduce how to create a common denominator. Here's an example of what we're talking about. I'm sorry, this is, these are the steps. The examples come up next. Um, these are the steps. I'm just going to tell you how to do it. Here's how you find a common denominator. Common denominator, this is the how to slide. All right, first thing you have to do is identify the first multiple that both denominators have in common. Okay, you're going to find the first multiple both denominators have in common. Okay, second, identify what number you need to multiply the denominator by to get that multiple. Now, it sounds like a lot. Just get it down. It'll make sense when we do an example, hopefully, in a few minutes. After you've done that, you have to multiply the numerator and denominator by that number and repeat for the other fraction. Okay? If you need a minute to get those down, hit pause. So I'm going to go on to the next slide and show you how to do that. And this is the next slide. Now, you should be, when you're ready for this slide, you should be have your notes on this page, I will be reading off of that previous slide that you just wrote down, the how-to, and on the bottom of page 23, but you should now be on page 24 working this out with me. This question says, determine whether the following fractions are equal. All right, so I'm going to read through the steps that I just gave you on page 23. It says, first, identify the first multiple both denominators have in common. Okay, so the denominators are 6 and 4. Right? The first multiple, that's, I don't know, what's the first number that 6 and 4 both go into? Did you say 12? You're right if you did. It's 12. Okay, that's step 1. Step 2 says, okay, identify what number you need to multiply the denominator by to get the first multiple. So here's what we're doing. I'm, I'm going to start with this fraction right here, the 3 sixth. If, identify the number you need to multiply the denominator by to get the first multiple. Here's the first multiple, 12. So I'm asking myself, 6 times something is 12. 2. Okay, so I'm going to go 6 times 2 equals 12. Now, 3 says multiply the numerator and the denominator by that 
Well, I just did the numerator, or I'm sorry, I just did the denominator. So I have to take the top number by the same number that I multiplied here. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 twelfths is an equivalent fraction to 3 sixths. We need this because I can do the same thing for this one on the bottom. 4 times something equals 12. Okay, that something is 3. So, take 4 times 3 and 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 4 times 3 is 12. Alright, now we can see that these are equivalent. Yes, they are, they are equal, which means equivalent. Okay, the common denominator will tell me if they're equal or not. Okay, that's one way. And honestly, it's kind of the long way to do that. This is the easier way. If you're just asked, tell me whether or not these are equal, this trick is a little easier. Okay, and it's called the rule of cross products. I know I'm a little bit longer than, than normal, but this video, I think the material is a little bit easier. So I want to finish this up so I can get on to 2 6 in the next one. So I just got a slide or two here to finish. Cross products. If cross products are equal, then the two fractions are equal. For example, let's say I have a fraction A over B. And I want to know, does A over B equal C over D? Okay, so what this means is if I, can, if I multiply these two numbers, A times D, and that is equal to these two numbers, b times c. If these two values are equal, then the two fractions would be equal. And this rule is actually really valuable for us when we get into proportions and solving um, all kinds of things. Knowing this, if you cross, find cross products, if they equal, the fractions are equal selves. For example, Let's look at this one we just did. That We already know that these are equal. We already figured it out two slides ago. All right. And notice what happens. Okay, let's say I didn't know that and I wanted to know if I take these two numbers, 3 times 4, and I want to know, do they, does that equal the product of those two numbers? Well, let's see. 3 times 4 is 12. 6 times 2 is 12. Since these are equal, yes, then these two fractions are equal. And that is always true. It's the rule of cross products. And that's incredibly helpful for us um, to be able to identify if it's true or not. So, all right, sorry I went a little bit long, and uh, hopefully you were able to get through that quickly. And uh, in the next video, we'll be looking at how to multiply fractions again and uh, what happens if you have to do some simplifying with that. Okay? See you soon.